here and I'm doing a review of underrated movies now this is a, I have a change of environment I'm on a, a nice little couch and I'm gonna review a movie that is a horror movie a movie that a lot of people nowadays think is underrated and I'm one of those people I'm here to do it fucking justice Halloween 3 season of the witch holy fucking shit you didn't think I was gonna do this one but I was because I love Halloween 3 season of the witch Halloween 3 Season of the Witch has a runtime of, uh, shit, I don't even know the runtime. Hour and 39 minutes. Came out in 1982. Uh, this is the plot of Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. When a terrified toy salesman is mysteriously attacked and brought to the hospital, babbling and clutching the year's most popular Halloween costume, an airy pumpkin mask, Dr. Dan Callis is thrust into a terrifying Halloween nightmare, working with the salesman's daughter, Ellie. Daniel traces a mask to the Silver Shamrock Navalis Company and its founder, Colonel Cochran. Ellie and D Daniel uncover the shocking Halloween plan and must stop it before trick-or-treaters across the country are kept from ever coming home. In his terrifying horror science fiction thriller, from writer-director Tommy Lee Wallace. And this is the special edition, which they finally made a special edition after all these years. And uh, 1982, the year that Halloween 3 Season of the Witch came out, um, there was quite a few other really great horror movies too that came out in 1982. Uh, uh, two of which that are considered classics now, they were cult classics and they went from that to being like classics. And they too were kind of underrated for the time. And that would be Evil Dead and uh, John Carpenter's The Thing. So this came out in 1982 and around the same time that this came out, John Carpenter was also working on uh, The Thing. And he didn't direct this, Tommy Lee Wallace did, but John Carpenter along with Alan Holworth helped compose the music. And Alan Holworth, who composed the music for Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, also composed music for Star Trek 2, Wrath of Khan. So, if you like Star Trek as well as, as uh, horror movies, check out my Star Trek 5 review. And normally I don't plug myself, but, you know, you need to see my Star Trek 5 review if you're watching the Halloween 3 review. So, if you haven't seen the Star Trek 5 review, watching the Halloween 3, Season of the Witch review, see Star Trek 5 review. Regardless, even if you don't like the movie that much, see the fucking review. Um... This movie has a great cast. Uh, first off, it's got Tom Atkins in it, uh, uh, which he, he was in, um, which I, I'll show you a picture of Tom Atkins if I can find a good one. Uh, here we go. Let's show you what he looks like. Here's a really good picture of him right here. And here's a, uh, another good picture of him. This is an illustrated picture. Uh, but anyways, um, Halloween 3 Season of the Witch stars Tom Atkins, and if you know who Tom Atkins is, he was in The Fog, the original Fog. Uh, he was also in Creep Show, Night of the Creeps, uh, My Bloody Valentine remake, which all of these I've seen him in, and he does a, a marvelous job, Maniac Cop, and Two Evil Eyes, and Bruiser. And it seems like a lot of times in a lot of the horror movies that he's in, he always plays a detective. But this one, he plays a doctor. So it seems like Tom Atkins is always playing somebody of some type of emergency profession. He's either playing a cop or a detective or a doctor or a psychiatrist. You know, he's always playing those type of roles. Uh, but he's most known for playing detectives. Um, which was an inside joke with a former friend of mine that we started calling him Detective Tom Atkins because he played a detective so much, um, which is funny. This also has Stacy Nelkin and Dan O'Hurley he in it. And uh, I'm not familiar with St Stacy Nelkin's body of work as an actress, but she does a terrific job, very beautiful lady. Uh, here's a picture of her. It's not the best picture, but here we go. I don't know how well the camera's going to capture that. And uh, Dan O'Hurley, 
Uh, he is he is uh, a character that I don't really want to reveal too much for those who haven't seen this because this you know this is one of those very suspenseful type of horror thrillers where you don't quite know what to expect if you haven't seen it. And I saw this originally on AMC during uh, AMC's Monster Fest. They later changed the name to Fear Fest, which I kind of wish they stuck with Monster Fest, but they changed the name to Fear Fest. But um, that was the very first time I saw it, and I kind of poorly dismissed it. And I thought, I need to see Halloween 3 Season of the Witch again. I need to see it a second time. So I saw it a couple years. Originally, I saw it, I want to say, probably during October of 2003 is when I originally saw it. I saw it then again during October of 2011. And I loved it. I thought, damn, I gotta own this movie. Why am I, why am I, I feel like I'm poorly dismissing Halloween 3 Season of the Witch and I need to own it. And I saw the DVD packaging. I thought, gee, they could do, you know, the packaging's not bad, but it has no, it has the movie, but it has no bonus features. Why don't they make a special edition of Halloween 3 Season of the Witch? It's such a good movie, why not? So I decided to wait a couple years. I was thinking, maybe they'll make a special edition if I'm lucky. Sure enough, they made a Halloween 3 Season of the Witch special edition DVD, which has some amazing bonus features, I might add. This company that makes this DVD is a great company that you would check out films that they release. They release a lot of old school horror, horror movies called Shout Factory or Scream Factory. Um, and uh, I never ever thought there would be a special edition, but I was always hoping there was. Sure enough, my hope turned into reality and they made a special edition. Praise the gods, I guess. You know, they made a fucking Halloween 3 Season of the Witch special edition. It's about damn fucking time. I'll say that right now. But, uh, a lot of there's a lot of uh, 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 mixed opinions with fans. Some people don't like Halloween Three: Season of the Witch simply due to the fact that it doesn't have Michael Myers in it, which I think that's fucking stupid. Okay, it doesn't have Michael Myers in it, but I think they're viewing it out of context. I really don't think they should view it as a movie with Michael Myers because he's not in it. But in a way, Michael Myers kind of is in it because Dick. Warlock, who did, who who played Michael Myers in Halloween 2, and did the stunts as Michael Myers in Halloween 2, does stunts in Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. So, ha ha! You know, touche, you know, to all the fans that say he's not in there. Technically, he is. He plays a, he plays a, I'm not going to say what he plays, because that will reveal too much. Um, because I want this movie to be shrouded in mystery for those who haven't seen it, if they're just seeing this review. Um, I would say that the best sequels for the first Halloween is Halloween 2 and Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. But I like Halloween 3 Season of the Witch simply because it has nothing to do with Michael Myers. It, it simply works as a standalone movie. And the thing is you could change the title and take off the, the 3 off of it and just call it Halloween Season of the Witch if you wanted to. And I think that's what it should have been called. It should have just been called Halloween Season of the Witch. Um, or if not that, they could have simply just called it Season of the Witch, you know, and not even attached a Halloween title to it. Um, but I think people expected Michael Myers, they expected a little too much out of this movie, and it didn't really give them what they wanted, and the movie wasn't very well marketed as a film, it was kind of poorly marketed in 1982. And 1982 was a big year for movies. There was a lot of great movies that came out in 1982. Besides The Thing and um, Evil Dead, E.T., Conan the Barbarian, Blade Runner, Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan. Um, I'm trying to think if I'm leaving any other movies out. John Carpenter's The Thing. Um... Uh, Friday the 13th, Part 3, um, all of those came out in 1982, along with Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, and I think there were just a lot of other movies 
that people wanted to see and maybe they weren't interested in this one. Um, it, it's a real shame though because it really is a good movie and it's really good that people recognize the fact that it's a good movie and they were willing to put out a special edition DVD. So thank you to Shout Factory or Scream Factory for doing that. You know, there are fans of this movie that do like it and I, like I said I think the best in the whole film series are the first three Halloween movies. This is the last, like, really, really good one. And as for Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, it's a decent movie. And Halloween 20 years later, that's a decent movie, too. Halloween 5, Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, uh, Halloween 8, Resurrection, and um, Halloween, the remake of the first and second Halloween by Rob Zombie, those are disastrous. Like... They have really poor continuity and some bad acting that's kind of highly questionable. And with the, Hall the Rob Zombie Halloween remakes, in my opinion, they're just... I want to say they're just full of shit because it's white trash. and uh, It's just white trash. I, I don't like that idea. Michael Myers is white trash. But I'm running out of tape, and that is the end of the re review. I'm sorry I had to cut it short. Thank you.